What's going on, Men's Health? I'm John Boyega. We're at Physique Warehouse. Today, you're gonna train like me. So now let's go get it. What's going on, guys? My name is Jake, and this is your Body Comp Prescription. Hope you're all having a great day. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a live breakdown of John Boyega's chest workout. Obviously, John is a very famous actor, and it looks like he's trying to build up his physique for a potential role, and one of his main priorities is building his chest. The chest is one of the most important movie muscles, cinema muscles, whatever you wanna call them, because it makes for an overall more powerful and strong look on camera. You guys seem to really enjoy when I do these live breakdowns, so if you could, smash the like button. It really helps the channel grow. But without further ado, let's hop into the video. This is my trainer, Tim Blakely. We train six days a week. This is the guy that gets me jacked. I mean, there's no smoke and mirrors. It's nuts and bolts, hard work, consistency. Today, we're gonna save you on a typical chest workout. Come on. Right off the bat, before we hop into this, I really like that John's trainer is very upfront about their training style. No smoke and mirrors, just hard work, consistency, and he's not promoting some sort of fad training regimen, which is always nice to see. Okay, first exercise is flat barbell press, sorry, bench press. Usually um, we get good warm up because it's the first exercise in, so we will warm up with a bar, never go straight into weights. So we do a couple of sets of 20 with a bar, nice. and then we'll just progressively build up to three working sets. John's very strong in upper chest, and lower chest we need to work on, so that's why I, I pick flat bench press. And this is the point where I do my little walk around. All right, so we're just starting out with some flat bench, pretty staple chest movement, and I also like the explanation as to why they're doing this. Apparently John has a pretty dominant upper chest, so they're just trying to balance out that physique by rounding out that mid to lower pec with some bench press. Try and walk off the agony. Form is, is the most important. You want to use the muscle uh, rather than just lift weight. His body position on the bench, yeah. tuck the shoulders back, so he takes shoulders, the chest is the uppermost lever, um, and then we're pressing for the stern and keeping the elbows in. Ah. Rep ranges will be anything from six to 12 reps. Second Good exercise, rep range. The Nautilus decline press, so emphasizing on the lower chest. It's a great, great biomechanics, good, good machine. That rep range will be anything from 6 to 12, even 6 to 15. All right, next up we got a machine decline press, once again to emphasize or bias that lower pec. Got no issues so far? Yeah. <laughs> next exercise will be table crossovers. I don't know why they call crossovers, because we don't cross. <laughs> uh, but we have the cable in the uppermost position because we want to work again with lower chest. We keep the chest high. Next up, we got some high to low cable flies, and when you do these, once again, you're emphasizing the lower pec, but I want to go over some form cues so that way you can maximize this movement. First up, as you can see, John is standing pretty much right in line with the cables, and I would actually suggest that you take a step forward so that way you can train the pec in a more lengthened position, meaning you're able to get a better stretch and a better range of motion. Also, another thing that I want you guys to consider is instead of thinking about bringing your hands together at the bottom of the movement, you actually want to think about getting your elbows as close together as possible because it's important that our humerus or our upper arm gets as close to the midline of our body as possible so we can really focus on shortening that pec. Keep the chest high and squeeze the hands in underneath the chest. And it's a great moment to look at yourself in the mirror and see where all the details are. Little pump check. <laughs> Number four is a modified, modified dumbbell fly press. press. So it's, it's neither a press nor a fly. With John, he's by and has got very long arms, so fly is really just going to feel, in a, in a good way, yeah. fly is really going to feel on the outer chest. I like to keep the arm. So his trainer classifies this next movement as kind of like a hybrid of a press and a fly. And honestly, I'd just stick to a standard dumbbell incline press because the point of a fly is to really emphasize that lengthened position like we talked about earlier. But if you're going through a full range of motion on your incline dumbbell press, you'll be able to use more weight, which will cause more mechanical tension, which leads to better growth. Then, so you sort of half pressing, half fly. So again, it's all about, you know, you shut your eyes, concentrate on stretching and squeezing your chest. As soon as you feel that stretch, you fire it and squeeze it and then repeat. I'm, I'm gonna stay here for a bit so you just get that. Yeah, just get that focus. Gotta right. get the thumbnail picture. I find myself activating everything just to stay on form and, and still on the bench. Okay, so the next exercise pep. All right, so this is a bit overkill if you ask me. This is the third fly variation he's done, and on top of that, the range of motion that I'm seeing so far is emphasizing the shortened position, 
but the elbows are still bent at the end of the movement and remember the function of your chest is to bring your upper arm your humerus across the body or as close to midline as you possibly can and it's going to be really hard to do that when you keep your elbows bent John on this one keeps nice light hands in fact we keep light hands on most of our chest exercises the harder you grip the bar the more tricep control yeah this is what I'm talking about right here you see how his uh, elbows are still bent a sort of feedback sensation so he can squeeze because we pushing into his chest mind muscle connection exercise is quite compound so it's easy for your shoulders and triceps to take over when we're training chest we want to work the chest we don't want to just move weight so by doing that we can try and isolate and it just gives him a better uh, sensation so you get that reception dips and do dips dips you got in yeah 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 Okay, so the last exercise, good old dips. Oh, dips, old school. Yeah, John really struggled with these to start with. But, but I was... All right, so it looks like the last movement is a chest focused dip. You can kind of see that he's leaning forward here. I think this is a super underrated exercise. A lot of people tend to forget about it, but this is a great way to finish off your chest workout. I also love starting my chest workout with some weighted dips, so that way you can hit them when you're fresh. You can really overload that stretched position, and it's a great compound movement. But if we really want to target our chest, we need to lean forward, check, but we also want to get some more bend in these elbows to allow that stretch in our pec to happen. You can see that he leans forward slightly on the dips because we're trying to concentrate more on chest and triceps. We use a wider grip in order to activate the chest. And it just looks good, that'd be real. But don't forget to squeeze hard at the top, squeeze the chest hard at the top. Yep. All right, guys, thanks for joining me and training like me. Uh, remember, motivation is key and consistency is key. Sometimes I don't really want to go into the gym and get this done, but the thought is always worse than actually going in and doing it. You figure out, you never know how strong you might be. And that was a nice way to wrap up the workout and wrap up the video. I know we're being a little bit nitpicky about some of this, the exercise selection, some of the form cues, but if you really want to grow your chest, you want to make sure that you're maximizing those things that are actually going to benefit you. You know, no one is perfect. You're allowed to change some things here and there based upon what you like doing and what works best for your body. Overall, I really like the workout. And as long as he stays consistent, the progress is going to come. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.